What's the story morning, Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Seeking Sister Wife Season 5, Episode 5, Seeking Can Be Complicated. So let's get started with Garrick and Danielle. So their segment starts off where it ended last week, where both Natalia and Danielle are confronting Garrick in the kitchen about why he still has this particular dating app on his phone. And Natalia's whole thing was, you told me that you had deleted the app, but I see that you still have the app so she's coming from the standpoint of why did you lie why did you have to lie about it because she did say to him it's not I'm not mad that you have the app I'm happy that you lied I'm mad that you lied about having the app um Danielle her whole point of view comes from her issue with him was like like why when I brought it up, you just kind of dismissed me because she had brought it up, I guess, months prior as far as why he still had this dating app. So when she had brought it up, he was very dismissive of her, I guess. But then when Atalia brings it up, he pays attention and he deletes the app. So Danielle felt slighted in that way because she's his actual, even though they're not legally married anymore, because remember, they did get a divorce for him to be able to marry Roberta um, for a spouse of Issa. But they're still a married couple, right? So this is, you know, this is his wife, the mother of his children. They've been together forever. So when she brings up something of concern, he doesn't pay any attention to it. But then when Italia brings it up, you know, the newbie, when she brings it up, he's like, oh my God, let me go ahead and delete it right away. So that's where her place of hurt was coming from. Natalia was just like, why are you lying? You know, just don't lie. So they're going back and forth with this whole app thing. Y'all, I don't understand how these dating apps work because when I met my husband, um, um, back in the dark ages, we didn't have dating apps and smartphones and all this other stuff. So I don't know how this stuff works because he was trying to say that even though he still had the app, he wasn't able to communicate with anybody. And then I think Danielle said, yes, you can still communicate with them, even though you're not active on the profile. I don't know how these things work. You know, when you pay a membership, what are you able to do? What are you able to see? If you don't pay a membership, what are the limited features that are offered? I have no idea how any of this works. Whatever the situation is, he was in some serious hot water with both women. And I'm thinking to myself, and Garrick, you want more wives. You know, look at the stress that two wives or one wife and a potential wife, you know, you're not even married to Natalia yet. You haven't even proposed to her yet. And look at the kind of hell that you're already going through. Now, can you imagine if it was five women interrogating you like this? Because he says he wants to have five wives. Can you imagine if five wives were mad at you at the same time about the same damn thing and they're all in the kitchen? interrogating I mean why do you want to live like this Gary why why do you want to live like this but anyway so they go on and on about the damn app and so um, when he tells Natalia because you know Natalia was like you know it's because you lied not because that you have it and Gary was like okay now I get it you know Danielle was like oh now you get it but you didn't get it when I when I had the issue with it so then later on oh by the way Natalia ended up leaving the kitchen she walked away because she was so frustrated with Garrick so later on Danielle and Garrick are sitting down just the two of them at the kitchen table and they're having a moment and Garrick apologizes to her he gets really emotional he starts crying and then I'm realizing wow Garrick Eric and Danielle cry a lot. Um, they are really meant to be because they cry a lot for one reason or another. One of them is always crying in every single episode. So he's crying. He's apologizing to Danielle. Danielle says that he, she understands that he didn't have any bad intentions by keeping the app. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, they kind of squirted away and he said something like he doesn't want to, he said he doesn't want to disappoint God or Natalia or Danielle. <laughs> he doesn't want to disappoint God or his women. So he's going to try to be a good boy now. So he, he apologizes profusely and, um, he says he's going to delete the apps. Natalia comes down and he apologizes to uh, Natalia as well. And um, as they're talking, because Natalia still wants to go at it. She still wants him to understand exactly how upset this made her. Whereas Danielle is like kind of over it, you know, okay, he apologized. Let's move on. But Natalia, even after he apologized to her, she still wants to go on and on and on about this damn app. So um, she asked him, how many apps do you have? And and so he's trying to like find the translator on the phone or try to find a phone to translate with. And she's like, you don't need a translator. Just give me the number. I understand numbers. 
I get numbers. I understand numbers. Just tell me the number of apps that you have. And so he came out and said that he had about 10 apps. And I'm like, wow, he had 10 dating apps. So he had about 10, like, once again, I don't know if that's normal or not normal in this day and age to have a whole bunch of different apps. Uh, but he said that the reason why he had 10 apps was because, you know, to find a woman who's into this polygamy lifestyle is difficult. So he has to broaden his prospects by having a whole bunch of apps to try to meet a whole bunch of potential women who are more likely to be in tune with a polygamous lifestyle. It's not like he's a man whore. It's just that, you know, it's hard to find women who are down with what they're doing. So, um, he says he had about 10 abs, but he's going to delete them. And, um, but she still wants to give him the third degree. In fact, she actually tells, um, Danielle, Hey, we should not let him off easy. He needs to understand that what he did was wrong and he needs to suffer the consequences. I don't know what those consequences are, but he apologized again and again and again. And so finally Natalia was like, okay, you know, just promise that you don't do this again. And he promised that he wouldn't. Now Garrick tells us in his confessional, he says that, you know, Natalia needs to get with the program because even though I deleted the apps, um, they're going to be coming back because my plan is to have five wives and this is how I beat my potentials. So I don't have them now and she's okay with it now, but she needs to process this and get with the program and understand that the apps are going to be coming back at some point in time. So <laughs> this is just like craziness. So he still plans on moving forward with his proposal, which we should be seeing next week. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But as far as, you know, Garrick and Danielle, the apps are gone to appease Natalia because that's the one that he is trying to woo. If Danielle didn't like the apps, too bad, so sad. He didn't delete them for her. He don't give a damn about how she feels. He deleted them for Natalia. And um, that's that. We'll see how it goes next week. Moving on from there, let's talk about Justin and Becky. Now, Justin, Justin and Becky have kind of been a snooze fest for me until uh, today. Oh, well, whenever I watched it. So Justin and Becky first of all, Justin, is he like a super tanner? Um, is he someone who tans a lot or is he like some type of ethnicity? Like he's, is he like Hispanic, Italian, Greek? Like what's going on? I think ju sometimes Justin and some of the pictures that they show us, you know, some of the, um, photos that they show us of him and Becky and Stefan, Justin's sometimes comes off like he's black. <laughs> he kind of looks black to me sometimes. I mean, I, I don't know, Justin, you might want to get a 23 and me and see what's really going on with your genetics because whenever they show that photo of him and Becky and um, Stephanie at the beach and they have Stephanie's face blurred out and it's like a beach background and he's standing in the middle of them with his arms around both of them, Justin looks like a black man to me in that picture, but I don't know. Moving on from there. So Stephanie, which is a, a woman that they've been dealing with, they forgot, you know, Desiree is long gone. Desiree said that she's not down with this. She's not interested anymore. So they left Desiree alone. So they want to go back to, um, you know, go back to their, to their old flame, Stephanie. But Stephanie, the problem with her is that she's very wishy-washy. Um, one minute she's down with the polygamous lifestyle. The next minute, you know, she doesn't want to do it. And she gets influenced a lot by her friends and her family to not do it. So she's constantly going back and forth with them. And I can't believe that they allow her to do this, you know, to play with them like this. So Stephanie calls and she asks them to come see her. And so they get really excited, especially Justin, um, to go and see her. So they get all ready and everything. I don't know exactly where she is and how far away she is from them. So I don't know if this is like a very long drive or a short drive, but they get all ready to go see Stephanie. So Justin tells us that he is head over heels in love with Stephanie and he really wants this to work out with her. He says that besides Becky, his wife, and besides his family, he doesn't love anybody as much as he loves Stephanie. So he is really into this girl. This girl has him turned upside down, inside out. So when she calls and says, come see me, Justin's on his way. Okay, you don't have to tell him twice. So the night before their trip to go see her, um, she called them and she changed her mind and said that she didn't want to see them anymore. But they don't give a damn. Justin don't give a damn. He's like, you know what? <laughs> you lit up this fire in me. You woke up my desire, so I'm going. I'm coming. I'm going. We're we're headed out there. I don't care what you say. We're still headed out there. So 
I'm trying to figure out what is up with these sister wives, these potential sister wives changing their minds at the very last minute, because later on, we see what Nyla and Naheem went through with uh, Keisha. We know about Roberta. Okay, Roberta changed her mind at the last minute too. What is up with these potentials changing their minds? I have a theory and we're going to get into it, but I definitely have a theory. So she changed her mind. She was like, oh, you know, I'm busy or whatever excuse that she gave them or why she couldn't see them, but they're still going to go out and see her. So Justin and Becky, they're still on their way. So they call Stephanie on their way there, but she doesn't even answer the phone. And so Becky tells her husband, Justin, she's like, you know what? I'm through with this. I'm so sick and tired of her, you know, pulling us in and pushing us away. She can't make up her mind if she wants to do this or not. And we're trying to plan a, a family. We're trying to extend our family, grow our family. And we don't have time for her games. This is the last time that she's going to play with us like this. So Justin talks to us about, you know, how Stephanie, so wishy-washy, always changing her mind. But he says that he loves her so much that he's willing to take a bullet for this girl. That's how much Justin loves Stephanie. So on their way to go see her, I don't know how they got the information that her gym membership had expired um, because Stephanie had mentioned, oh, St she got it, they got it from Stephanie, I forgot. So Stephanie had mentioned how she's been really stressed out lately. She hasn't been happy because she cannot work out because her gym membership had expired. So on their way to her house, they stopped by the gym and they renew her membership. So they paid for her gym membership renewal. And... Also, Becky had mentioned how, you know, they like to buy things for her. They paid for her gym membership. So I'm like, okay, so now it's making sense. It seems like she lures them in, says that she wants to go through with this whole polygamy thing to get on their good side so that they can pay for things and buy her stuff. And then when she has what she wants out of them, all of a sudden she changes her mind and doesn't want to go through with it anymore. So I'm like, Stephanie, I see you. I see what game you're playing. I don't know if Justin and Becky see it, or maybe they're so deep in love with you that they cannot see it. They're blinded by love. But baby, I see you. It seems like she's probably using them for money, gifts, financial, whatever. So I'm like, okay, now it's making sense why she cannot really commit because she really doesn't want to live this lifestyle. She's just here for the money. She's just here for the financial benefit that she gets from these two people. And I wonder if Stephanie and Justin have consummated their relationship because something kind of tells me that they probably did. And maybe that's why your boy Justin is so strung out on Stephanie. Moving on to the Davis family. So we have April. She finally gets a chance to talk to Danielle over doing laundry. Um, they put her to work right away. So as soon as she came home, they're like, here's this laundry basket. Get to folding these damn clothes. So April and Danielle are talking. And April really wants Danielle to understand the impact her leaving had on them. And she just goes on and on about how hurt they were and to really like um, put that nail in the coffin, like to really hit it home to Danielle on, you know, her doing this horrible thing of leaving and how much it affected them. She tells Danielle that, you know, I try to brush, you know, Vera's teeth, you know, the baby that um, Nick and um, Jennifer have. Um, April goes, you know, I try to brush Vera's teeth, but she won't let me because she's so used to you doing it. You were the only one that could brush her teeth and, and she wouldn't let anybody brush her teeth because you were gone. You weren't here to brush her teeth. And I was like, damn, April, <laughs> the girl came back. Okay. She understands what she did was wrong. Nick has definitely told her. You have told her. She understands. Now here you are talking about how the baby's damn, her little one tooth was decaying and about to fall out of her damn mouth because you were gone and you weren't there to brush her damn teeth because the baby absolutely refused to let anybody go anywhere near her mouth with that damn toothbrush. So Danielle completely broke down. It worked because April, you know, was trying to make her feel so guilty about leaving and leaving baby Vera behind and not brushing that one little tooth that she had in her mouth. She made her feel so guilty about it that, you know, poor Danielle completely broke down. And she was like, I wasn't trying to hurt y'all. That wasn't my intent. And so April is like, well, you just need to promise me that you will never, ever leave again. 
Just promise me that you will never do this again. And so Daniel was like, of course not, April. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. And so because April now, I guess, got what she wanted, which is to make her feel so guilty that she will never leave again. April tells her that, you know, we're going to put a pause on finding another wife. So, um, you know, we're just going to be us, you know, the four of us. And we're not really concerned right now about finding another wife. And so, you know, Danielle was really relieved. Y'all, something about this was very cultish, like a cult. It was cultish to me because y'all are prom y'all are making a promise to not leave. Can you imagine if this was a monogamous relationship and it was just, um, you know, like a man and a woman dating, um, or, you know, a man and a man, woman, and a woman, just a monogamous two party relationship. And one partner says to the other, you need to make, you need to promise me that you will never ever leave me. I mean, do you know how fatal attraction like that sounds? That sounds crazy. You know, if someone is no longer satisfied or being happy in a relationship, they have every right to walk away or to end the relationship, you know, tactfully, respectfully, with um, with grace, with care, with love. But you can't force someone to stay in a situation that they're no longer happy with. So they completely use the baby to brainwash her and to make her feel so guilty. You know, because Nick also, he did it first he laid down the foundation when he took her out for the smoothies and he was like you know we're not really sure like why you did this and you know um you know don't do this again and you know you really really hurt us and we don't understand why you love and now here comes april doing the same damn thing you know baby vera we couldn't brush your teeth because you weren't there and it's just like this is like a damn cult <laughs> i don't know what the hell's going on this is like a damn cult so she promised not to leave and they promised her that they were not going to um, bring anybody else around until who knows when. Moving on to Nyla and Naeem. So Nyla and Naeem, they were on their way to go meet Keisha, which was the potential sister wife that they had met um, online. I don't know if it was a dating app, social media, I don't know what the hell it was, but they met her and now they're going to go meet her. And I don't know where she is or how far away she is from them, but they're on their way. On their way to go see her, um, they talk about, then they stop by a florist to get some flowers for her. And while they're there, um, Naeem, no, Nyla tells her husband, Naeem, that there's, you know, she talks about boundaries, that there have to be boundaries. Now, you have to understand what you can and cannot do with her because we're still in the early stages of getting to know her. So absolutely, positively, no sex, no type of any kind of sexual contact, no overnight visits. You know, I'm going to keep it completely as platonic as possible while we're trying to get to know her. So then the florist comes out and um, gives them their bouquet or their whatever flowers they had gotten for Keisha. And I thought this part was kind of stagey. And it always is on sister wives, whenever a stranger, like if they're in a restaurant or in a store and like the employee of the establishment that they're in will ask some kind of question like, oh, so, you know, what is, what are these, who are these flowers for? What's the occasion for the flowers or why are there so many of y'all? It's always so stagey to me just for them to tell the stranger we're polygamists. We're looking for a sister wife or it's like nobody cares. If I saw a man walk in. Uh, with four women and I was working at some establishment I'm not gonna ask what are you doing with all these women what's going on here I'm not gonna do that because it's none of my business <laughs> so it's just weird how the florist will be like oh what's the occasion like just sell your damn flowers and go about your business so you know that the producers if she's a real florist, the producers told her to do this just like when um, the Davis family had gone to the uh, I think it was like a, a, a toy store or something to buy a toy for Vera. Um, the cashier was like, so what's going on here? Like, what's all this? <laughs> and it's like, nobody would ask that in real life. But anywho, so they tell the florists that they are polygamists and the florists was basically like, you know, F that I would never do that. Okay, fine. Nobody cares. So they're on, they are on their way to go pick up Keisha, I think from the airport or something. And they get a text from her saying that she's not able to make it because she needs to tie up some loose ends, you know, wherever she's at and that she's not ready to, to take this trip right now. Hopefully they'll understand and so on and so forth. So she basically cancels on them. And so Naeem was really upset because he's like, why couldn't she tell us this last night? In fact, last night she was talking about how much she was looking forward to seeing them. She was really excited about the trip. She couldn't wait to meet them. And now all of a sudden, 
then she did a complete 180 on him. Now she's talking about how she can't, she not be able to make it. Like, you know, what's really going on? So she bailed on them, just like Roberta, just like um, Stephanie. She completely bailed on them. So they're like, well, since we're already out here, let's make the best of it. So they go out to eat and um, the restaurant that they were going to take Keisha to. And um, Naeem says that he is over meeting people on social media because it's just not worth the time and the effort that it takes to try to go meet them. And then they cancel on you. So he's like, I want to meet somebody in our own hometown where we can meet them in person. We don't have to take these damn trips and waste all this money and all this time. So let's just try to concentrate, you know, to meet someone near home. And I forgot what uh, Nyla said, but she really wasn't feeling that for some reason. I forgot why she wasn't. She said something about how she doesn't want to open up herself to like a friendship and then get her heart broken or something like that. I really didn't understand. Um, I really wasn't paying that close attention to tell you the truth. So that's Naeem and Nala. They got stood up by Keisha. No more Keisha. And I was really looking forward to their relationship moving forward. And as much as I want to see how the new sister wife will um, incorporate herself into the new family, I always have to remind myself it's not about the new wife living with them and how see how it's not really about that. This show is called seeking sister wife. So it's about the process of seeking a sister wife. And with the Snowdens, however many seasons ago, we actually got to see their two potential sister wives integrate into their lives. Um, but with a lot, of, but we're also seeing Danielle integrate into the lives of the Davis family. Um, which is fine. You know, well, that's what, that's what I enjoy watching. I want to see how the new sister wife blends in with everybody else. But the purpose of the show is just the process of finding a sister wife. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.